Hi guys, this is The Advisor and welcome back to my channel. Now, today I have, for the first time, I'm going to be touching on two topics. My topics are normally very complex and takes a long time to present, but today I have two fairly short topics, So, but extremely, extremely vital and important. So I'm going to put out both of them now. But before I even go into that, I would like to big up some of my fans. Glenda Batman, hi. You're my new girlfriend, you know. <laughs> yeah? You're <laughs> me I had a boyfriend now. And Karen Brooks, you too. You're the two of them. And then, but me have been in middle. Right? Me, me want the middle. Anyway, Michelle Pink, you know, me can't say this without you. Can't be big up nobody else without you in there. Your number one fan. Daniel Wisdom. Daniel, of course, is a female. And Doris Gordon. Yeah, big up the la ladies. You know, well, 70% of my um, fans are actually men. But what I find is that the women tend to interact with me more for some reason, and I am glad for that. So, Glenda Batman, Karen Brooks, Michelle Pink, Daniel Wisdom, Doris Garden, you lovely ladies, thank you for your support. And make a big up one, Long Seed Man too. White Ranger, yeah man, big up yourself, enough respect. I have other people to big up, but your time will come. And without further ado, I want you to take a look at this clip and you're not going to know how important this clip is, this video clip is, until the end and you see what I have to say about this clip. And this is an old clip. It came out a number of years ago and you will not know the significance of it until I explain to you at the end. So here goes. The over 40 men who gathered outside the gates of the Chinese construction company were adamant they have had enough following Wednesday's dismissal of a long-standing certified operator at the company with no pay. We are working for our, from this project start, sir. I thought two years ago, and the country said, we, we're not good, we must go home. And they're, under, they're un, underpaying, we say we are chaining, we must go home, and we don't good. Up. So they, they're paying with $370 an operator them to dig down all this mountain. I told them said we must go home catch Jamaica no gooder. So what they are doing here? His dismissal raised the tempo on the matter of alleged delayed payments and underpayment among the local workers who are said to do most of the construction work. They will pay me two hundred and seventy dollars a what? Right? And 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 pan pan pay pan the payroll when we get from the from, from a bigger head. They say say five hundred and fifty dollars. They will pay an hour up every operator. Collect that. So they must collect, so collect half of that. So, 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 so the bigger heads who you get that from, did you yeah. find out that to him? No, disclose. Can't do that. You understand? Keep, keep that confidential. The men lamented they work from morning till night on a shift lasting just over 12 hours and they have no health benefits and no overtime. They, however, complain disrespect and abuse is constant from their employers. Some more Jamaican know, so when I see this highway, don't feel like the Chinese bill it. Or we bill it. Now me understand what slavery all about. Me now understand what slavery all about. I don't have no time for my family, you know. By this, the workers were called to a meeting and the police were summoned. Following the meeting, tempers flared in the direction of the Prime Minister. You know where life is done upon a mall road? White mall. Eh, hey, white mall. From 6 to 6.30. Yeah, you joke thing. Hey, Portia, sort out yourself. Them vote for you say you're the mother. You understand, you have to care for people like our mother, care for your baby. You ain't care for nobody. Workers insisted in the presence of the officers that no work will be done until Mr. Brody is reinstated and the wage and abuse issue is resolved. Joke thing. Straight joke thing. You know what I mean? We we'll go as individuals and big people. If we go talk to the Chinese, them about the situation. And Chinaman is going to come and tell you, basically, if you don't want work, go home. Yeah. Yes, that's if you right. don't want no work, go home. Right. Because your rights doesn't matter. Nico Lewis, CVM News. Now, as we put out that clip, I'm going to 
play another clip again. Take a look at this clip and look at the difference between this one and that one. President Paul Kagame has ordered an immediate deportation of 18 Chinese nationals from Rwanda. President Kagame said, quote, the 18 investors were found guilty of mistreating Rwandan workers and grabbing land on which they operated their business. Africa is for Africans. We can't be slaves in Africa. We don't tolerate the nonsense of discrimination here. Rwanda is for Africans and those who mean well for us. I am directing the 18 Chinese investors to leave Rwanda immediately and must never return. Rwandan people must enjoy their rights in their country. Let this be a lesson to the remaining Chinese investors. This is a strong message towards foreign investors in Rwanda. And what he's saying is clear and simple. If you don't treat our people right, if you don't play by the rules, if you don't act accordingly, you are going to be deported. You are going to be kicked out and you are no longer going to have the business you had in this country, which is a great message to send because for so long, Africans have been mistreated in their own lands because of the governments just allowing it to go on in the name of investment, in the name of getting more money, in the name of we don't want to mess with our relationship with those foreign countries. But now Rwanda clearly has sent a clear message and the message speaks for itself. 18 of those investors were kicked out of Rwanda. They cannot return back there or claim their investment. So others I'm sure are taking notes and they're going to think twice before discriminating against our people. The main reason why he kicked them out is because they were mistreating their workers. They were taking land that does not belong to them. And this, as you all know, usually only happens in Africa. Foreigners feel like they can own us or they can control us. Well, one of the reasons why they feel that way is because they got away with it for so long. Our governments, our leaders would not say anything and there would be no justice that would be served. So they got used to this treatment like they're gods, you know, those semi-gods. So at the end of the day, you know, it's us that can create boundaries. It's us that can say no to mistreatment, discrimination, racism towards our people. So we say well done, President Kagame. Anyways, fam, let us know down below. No, that country is called Rwanda and its president is called Paul Kagame. Now, you see how Paul Kagame deal with these things? You see how he dealt with it? He, this is a man... No, first of all, before, for those of you who have never heard of Rwanda, Rwanda is a small, one of the smallest country on the African continent. I think it's in the top, in the least five smallest of the 40 other African countries, right? And this little country, it is landlocked. And it has not a lot of resources, even though it's probably the second highest um, earning per capita in Africa and the highest um, by living standards. But it's a very small place, very small place, very insignificant little place. And yet Rwanda was able to look at China and run out the people them out of them country I was 18 of them one time I said don't come back here if you're going to treat we if you're going to say you're going to treat Africa and Africans and black people no come back here so and take this as a lesson now you see how Jamaica dealt with it you see when this incident happened the day after that we heard nothing we heard nothing because what's seem to have happened, you know, is that the government, the Ministry of Labor, more than likely simply made a call or two and really just tell the Chinese, please, and kiss their rear end to tell them to do better. But no steps were taken to teach the Chinese any lessons and probably I don't know 
probably what might have happened was that they cook up some deal under the quiet. Maybe the men who came on screen were fired, or if they were fired, had never even been reinstated. Now, this happened, I must say, under PNP administration. But do not be fooled. Had it been a JLP administration at that time, it would have still happened. And if situation like this happened today, Andrew Holness would have still allowed that to happen. He would not stand up. Because let me tell you something, there is no Jamaican Prime Minister who have ever, ever had any balls to stand up to a foreigner. It, they are Jamaican Prime Ministers and governments on a whole. They are the most spineless creatures on planet Earth. They are some of the most spineless. They're worse than the opossum who fall up and drop down when they see danger. And even when there's no danger. And I can tell you this. There is no reason for the Jamaican government to be behaving like that. And if this, and it is the ethos, it is the mindset of Jamaican prime ministers, of Jamaican politicians on a whole, to be spineless. They have absolutely no tet testicular fortitude. And the Jamaicans always suffer because we, are, we have spineless leaders. If this had happened tomorrow, if this happened tomorrow morning, Andrew would do nothing. But you know the sad thing is, there is no reason on the face of this earth for a Jamaican government not to act and act punitively and decisively in a case where Jamaican workers are being exploited. You know why? China need us. We need the Chinese right now, and I think so. But the Chinese need us equally as much as we need them. And here's the reason why. There is something called the Belt and Road Initiative that China has started about 15 to 17 years ago. And I'm going to explain. The, the Belt and Road Initiative is a series of connected highways, bridges, tunnels, waterways, and so on, that China is going to, is, is making across Europe, across Asia, across Africa, across Central and South America, and across the Caribbean. And the whole purpose of that is to ensure that there's a logistical circle around the globe that leads right back in and out of China. And China is doing this so they can be independent of any other country on the face of the earth in how they get goods and send out goods. And the Belt and Road Initiative, which is, I think, it's a 25-year project, is more than halfway through, about three quarters way through. And Jamaica, there's only two countries in the Caribbean that are vital to the Belt and Road Initiative. And that is Panama, one. And the reason why Panama is because of the Panama Canal. The Panama Canal, as a waterway, is one of the fulcrums of the whole um, Belt and Road Initiative. The other country, and this side of the world, is Jamaica. For several reasons, because we have the largest transshipment port this side of the Caribbean. We have the technology, we have the people, we have the skills, we speak English, and we are geographically located in such a central area that we are extremely vital to the Chinese plans. If the Chinese were to abandon Jamaica, the Belt and Road Initiative, they would have to add another seven or eight years to the project's fulfillment if they abandon Jamaica. That is how vital Jamaica is. But look at Rwanda. Rwanda is a little place and it is surrounded by Kenya, I think Burundi, Uganda, part of um, 
Democratic Republic of the Congo, and so on. So it's surrounded by about five or six countries, that little place. So, Paul Kagame have everything to lose if he kicks the Chinese out or if he, if he ruffle their feathers. Yet, Paul Kagame was man enough to say, listen, you can't do this to me, me I kick you out. That is a man with self-respect. That is a man who's, um, what should we say now? Him, him seed bag, let me tell you, Paul Kagame seed bag is like the size of a big Jamaican ram goat. That is how that man, we are about 10 pounds a seed bag, Paul Kagame have, if in the real world, if we were to look at it. Now, no Jamaican Prime Minister would have done that. We mean say Jamaican Prime Minister would have the seed bag of a uh, what it all. Of a little one grain of peanut. And for those of you who are overseas who don't know what seed bag means, since it's a Jamaican term, it's the scrotum. You can from some of you who don't, I can't use the other word, but um scrotum. Yes? So I am telling you, this is a real man, and this is a man that I respect to the maximum heights. He will stand up and say, my dignity, my pride, my self-respect, and that of my people, and that of my country, and that of black people on a whole, and Africa on a whole, you're not going to take no step away. And listen, when Paul Kagame done, does that, China can lift up and don't invest nothing in there. China can always go. And China can actually bypass him because the Belt and Road Initiative can bypass Rwanda because there is so many countries surrounding Rwanda, which is landlocked. It has no ports. It has no real significant value in terms of the Belt and Road Initiative. Yet Paul, G Paul Kagame can do what he did. Yet we, as a country, we are vital. We can, we, we are vital to the Belt and Road Initiative that China has, which is a national plan which has to go through. And we would not even, not even a little man, if we have a little Chinaman who sweep the grounds, come to Jamaica and sweep the grounds of the projects that the Chinese are the compound the Chinese are, and if he do, does anything wrong, a Jamaican government would be afraid to send him home. We wouldn't even want to send him home because we doesn't even have that in our way. We are such a subservient people who doesn't even know what we are worth. We doesn't even know what we value. Because if we did value ourselves and know the position that our country has and, and, and know how vital it is to the national interest of China, as being part of the Belt and Road Initiative, we would not act as subservient as we do. And as a matter of fact, by nature, we are just a subservient, spineless set of people who have always been ru ruling us. So I wouldn't be surprised if we know how, how vital we are to China and would still just stand by and lick their boots. That's just naturally who we are. That's how our leaders are. And make no doubt about it. For all of the times that China is here exploiting our people, Andrew Holness, our current prime minister, I hear about the exploitation going on and all the projects. And since he came to power, nothing has been said. Nothing. Absolutely not a word. That's how this spineless these people without any self-respect or pride behave. So I'm just saying, guys, know the difference and see how real people run country and why I respect that man, Paul Kagame, more than I would ever respect any prime minister of this country, ever. Anyway, now let me move on to the next topic. And it somewhat concerns the same Belt and Road Initiative. Now, we might not have 
heard about it. So, some of us might not have heard, but guys, you need to know this. This is very important for you if you live in the modern world. There are something, there's something called the BRICS countries. B-R-I-C-S. And what are the BRICS countries and how it's going to affect the life of every human being on planet Earth? I'll tell you why. BRICS, B-R-I-C-S, stand for Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. Now, these countries are trying to break away from the U.S. dollar. And they are trying to bring in a system where they can pay for the goods and trade services and cut out the United States as one of its trade of its main trade partners. And the Belt and Road Initiative falls right into this entire system because China is going to allow the other four BRICS countries, along with itself, to free access to the BRICS, um, to, to all five members of the BRICS. And surprisingly, one of the, the, the main partner for the past 40 years, one of the main partners of U.S., are trying to join BRICS, which is Saudi Arabia. Now, if Saudi Arabia join BRICS, it done. US dollar will gone to nothing. So, the US dollar, I can tell you guys, will be worthless in a few years. Its value is going to drop. So, try to think of other currencies. Now, the United States have been trying for many years to prevent that from happening. First, he wanted to prevent it when that's when Saddam Hussein wanted to break away and sell his oil in another currency apart from US dollar. You see what Saddam they do to Saddam Hussein because he wanted to separate himself and sell his oil in a different currency. US, they bombed this country and they executed him. Now, the next country that they did that to is Libya. When Muammar Gaddafi decided that he was going to try to use gold dinars to trade US dollar, they bombed him, bombed this country, and then held him, and the United States executed him. Now, the Belt and Road Initiative has the United States very worried because they know these five countries joined together Three of which are nuclear powers, China, India, and, and, and Russia are nuclear powers. Now, if they get together, it will be difficult for the US dollar to come back. Now, we see a conflict going on, and I don't want to call the name of it, because I don't want Facebook and the CIA to flag it and take down the post. But we see a conflict going on, and we think it's Russia and another country fighting, but actually is the United States fighting Russia by proxy and using the people of that country with using the stooge leader of that country to attack Russia because they know that the strongest partner in the BRICS nations is Russia. And if they destroy Russia, the BRICS community might fall apart. So this is not as we see it or most people think. But all I'm saying, I hope it fails. I hope what America is doing fails. And I hope BRICS will come to being. And I would advise Jamaicans and Jamaican government to start joining the real people who will run things and who is really mean Jamaica's interest any good. If they know anything about what's going on in the world, they should know even more than me. But I doubt they do. Because most of these people up there in the house, they're not so very bright. And I do not think, I honestly can tell you, and not my chest say, I don't think one single one of them can stand up in front of me, any one of them, and depict any topic on the face of this earth that they could write a 5,000 page 
word dissertation on any topic that I can't do the same in any issue whatsoever. Them not so bright. And we can tell them and challenge them. And anybody sitting in that garden house can test me on that any day, even in my sleep. So I tell, tell you guys, you want more tips? I'll tell you which currency you should start buying and saving your money in. But I will do that shortly. So keep abreast of what's going on here. Thank you for listening. Like, share, leave a comment. And I look forward to seeing my next video.